Each legislative session, KHI is hard at work keeping you informed on the latest health policy discussions from across the street in downtown Topeka. Health at the Capitol is a KHI production, a monthly recap with our legislative monitoring team offering you a closer look at policy work happening now in Kansas and coming up. Here's a look at topics from our latest episode. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Health at the Capitol. I'm your host, Teresa Freed, the Director of Strategic Communication and Engagement here at the Kansas Health Institute. And we have with us the privilege of speaking to, once again, Linda Shepard, who is our strategy team leader. She heads our legislative monitoring division. We also have with us Emma Urich, who is an analyst here at KHI. She is visiting us for the first time on this particular show, but she's got lots of podcasting experience with another one of our KHI products, um, Health on the Planes. So check out that one as well. Um, as we start this episode, I just want to talk a little bit about what our legislative monitoring team does. So Linda, if you want to tell us a little bit about um, all the activity that, that happens during session for KHI. Right. So um, one of the things that KHI uh, has done for several years is before the session starts, we start putting our heads together and trying to come up with a list of what, um, what kinds of topics uh, health-related topics that we think the legislature is going to focus on for that particular session. So we spend some time um, putting together an issue brief that we call our legislative preview, and that is always published right before the session starts, sometimes the day that the session begins. And, and it really is just uh, KHI's crystal ball look at what do we think might be uh, the important topics that the legislature will be discussing during that session related to health in any way. Um, and then as soon as the session starts, we all um, split, uh, split up all of the various committees that are uh, meeting across the street at the Capitol, and we monitor all of their hearings, all of their meetings. Uh, we pay it close attention to what bills are introduced and what committees they go into, and then continue to monitor those bills as they progress through the session um, and get passed or, or whatever happens to them. And as we do that, uh, we that precise process starts and continues through the whole time that the um, session is going. And we also produce uh, a product called Health at the Capital, which is our attempt to, to take all that information that happens and put that into a summary form that is um, published on our website so that our audience can see the things that are happening. And I think the thing that's most interesting is the way that we uh, defined health is very, very broad. So uh, in kind of going along with the uh, the kind of work that KHI does, we include uh, child welfare. Uh, as part of that, we look at juvenile justice. Uh, we look at um, things like, you know, uh, in this case, and I, I hope to have a talk conversation about this, about medical marijuana, um, looking at all kinds of things that are happening that we say our, our health in a very broad way and certainly would impact the health of Kansans. And so we, we do that. And then at the end of the session, so we're sort of heading that direction now, start to prepare what we refer to as our legislative recap. And we put that together. And um, at the after the session's over, that basically looks back and says, here's what they talked about. Here's what bills were passed. So we have a very detailed bill tracker that uh, gives all the information about what bills were introduced and how far they progressed through the session. All right, Emma, I know it's a very boring time for you um, <laughs> during session, but can you talk about how you spend your days? Like, what, what, what do you enjoy mo most about the legislative session and, and monitoring? Yeah, so this is my third session that I've covered here at the Kansas Health Institute since starting about two and a half years, or two years and some change. Um, a typical week, well, this week is extra special because our so most of my committees are no longer actually meeting and they've wrapped up their regular committee uh, hearings where they work bills and hear various presentations and such. And now these bills are making their way out of committees and onto the House and Senate floors uh, to be passed to the other chamber. So it's an exciting time. It's definitely um a lot of care and attention to making sure we know exactly where these bills are ending up because they get just chucked into a lot of different committees that we don't typically uh, watch despite, you know, as Linda said, we pay quite a close, quite close attention to um, a variety of bills and as they relate to health. So we're very busy. Yes, of course. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about those um, remaining bills and also sort of the status of some of the 
the proposals that we talked about in previous episodes. And so the first one um, on our list here is Medicaid expansion. That one got a lot of attention recently. Um, it was a couple of packed rooms, and KHI also got the opportunity to testify, providing neutral testimony um, about some of our research related to Medicaid expansion. So if you can talk a little bit about the status of that. On, on the Senate side, it was, uh, it, it was not necessarily focused specifically on that bill. It was more of an informational hearing. But um, the, the goal of those two hearings that were held last week was to get a testimony, uh, proponent and opponent testimony, for the idea of Medicaid expansion. And, and uh, you know, those bills for Medicaid expansion have been introduced several years in a row. And, the, and, and obviously this, this has been going on for 10 years, uh, starting with the enactment of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, but the, uh, as Emma said, the House was packed and uh, lots of folks in the room uh, talking about that. And so next on our list, um, we've talked about this topic before too, in homelessness and how is that being addressed? Yeah, so um, the Homelessness Infrastructure Grant legislation that was introduced in the House as House Bill 2723 um, recently was worked last Thursday, and a variety of amendments were proposed in the House Committee on Welfare Reform. Um, So this bill, as a reminder, would have had the $40 million in funds um, administered through KDADS to form this Homelessness Infrastructure Grant to be Um, awarded to jurisdictions that apply for that to make capital improvements to their existing or establish new homelessness um, infrastructure through, you know, temporary shelters. It could be a congregate shelter where you have everybody in a room or a non-congregate where that's um, individual units. So that bill heard from a variety of different uh, jurisdictions that came forward to propose some potential plans for how they would use those funds if awarded. Um, it in the House, it was tabled for the session. However, there is a mirror bill on, that was introduced in Senate Ways and Means on March 11th um, with that language, and they have been making some significant amendments to that version of the bill. Okay, and there's not much time to go, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. So another um, topic that we discussed previously was um, legal permanency options for youth. And so can you talk a little bit about the, the legislation tied to that? So um, this was a, was a really interesting piece of legislation because um, this, was, uh, this is uh, attempting to address this issue of we have uh, young people who are aging out of the um, foster care system uh, here in the state. And uh, as they come to that point of, being a- of aging out, um, in some cases, that they no longer have uh, relationships with their biological families, and uh, and they are sort of uh, taken, you know, put out and and sort of asked to to start to taking care of themselves, uh, often without a lot of really uh, of really helpful support. So this bill uh, actually was something that was worked on by a number of individuals who had uh, young people who had been in the system previously, coming up with a way for them to have a. Um, create some sort of legal relationship with people who had been uh, supportive of them or cared for them uh, as they were uh, as they would continue to to grow and that they can maintain those relationships and really really legalize that relationship in a way that's meaningful uh, and uh, have people in their family who are committed to helping them continue uh, as they as they move into a young adulthood so it uh, Kansas is very it's unusual Kansas uh, is, um, unique in having this kind of uh, uh, bill going through right now. So it's not, this is not something that, that other states have done yet. So we're really sort of ahead of the game on this particular thing. But it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for these young people to continue to have uh, folks who have been helpful to them uh, as they continue to grow up and will have that support. So the, the last question is just there's been a lot of activity and you always expect this as we start to wind down because there's that urgency behind some of the legislation. It's now or never. And so what are some of the, the proposals that are popping up right now that we're monitoring? So I think probably the one of the most interesting things and, and this uh, uh, that is coming up sort of here at the end of the session is well, we do have now a medical or a medical cannabis bill. Uh, this bill was really just introduced on the 18th of this month, so it's only been uh, been around for a few days. We had heard that we thought there was going to be a bill 
uh, this bill will have its first hearing tomorrow. Uh, so we're, we're uh, recording this on, on the 27th, but it'll be on the 28th, first thing in the morning. Uh, and it, um, it's, it's unique. Uh, you know, we've been expecting uh, a medical cannabis bill for a number of years. And uh, in our uh, previews, we've kept saying, oh, we think it's going to happen this year. It's going to happen. Um, but uh, really, I think this, this bill coming together at this time and getting set for a hearing tomorrow, um, I think that that is uh, unusual. And I, I, I would suggest is something that maybe there really is some some uh, legs behind this and getting this passed. But this bill is very interesting because it is uh, is being set up as a pilot program. So um, KDHE would be entering into contracts with uh, organiz- with companies that can cultivate and process medical cannabis. Uh, it's on a, on a five year um, track to occur, and it, this this. It's set up to be very um, a very controlled way to to do medical cannabis, and as I said, it's set up. I mean, it specifically is called a pilot program. So I think um, the legislature, if they were to pass this, uh, are looking at a way to really do this in a controlled way. Okay. Any other um, items we want to highlight? Um, you know, we, uh, I was mentioning uh, to you earlier that they, you know, there. This is as Emma said. This is a really busy time, and so we are getting. Um, a lot of alerts about bills that are that are being passed uh, by you know in chamber and coming out and so there was one of the bills that caught my attention uh, right before I came down today was uh, you know as you all know and so this is in the social welfare or uh, child welfare area that um, you know there have been unfortunately some um, some loss of lives of small children uh, coming through the child you know through the child welfare system. And one of the challenges that has occurred in the past is that when there, when there unfortunately is a death of a child, uh, as you could imagine, the media and other uh, parties are interested in understanding what role um, DCF played in, in that, if any, and, and what contact they had with them. And the way the law was structured before, um, DCF really was pretty limited in the kind of information that they could provide. So uh, one of the bills that um, got passed in one of the chambers this morning is attempting to address that issue so that uh, DCF is able to provide some information right away uh, that they wouldn't normally have been able to do until after there was further uh, further investigation. So I think um, people will appreciate having that information and knowing what happened in those circumstances. All right. Very good. And um, we'll, of course, monitor that and the other legislation referring to uh, to health in part of our recap that we do on a regular basis. But then also at the end of the session, we'll have a good recap, too, of, of all the, the major activity related to health. So um, we encourage everyone to join our mailing list or email list. Um, go to khi.org. That way you can receive those updates as they become available. Thanks for joining us.